We are built for this network, network for the strong, not the weak. Yo, this is Big Illinois 73. I want you to tune in to the Backyard Podcast Music Sessions Friday nights, 10 p.m. Central Time on the Bill for This Network on the Spreaker.com. Check us out. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Peace. Support the greatest from South Central. Tune in on Sunday for Sunday Night Love Jones, 4 o'clock, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And on Mondays for Monday Night Love Jones, 4 o'clock, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for good music, good conversation, and good vibes. It's all about the love. Yeah, man. Queen Nazinga was one of those women that you didn't want any problems with. Nazinga was known for her battles against the Portuguese in Angola. She fought against slavery until the day that she died. According to Portuguese records, she died December 17, 1663. She was queen of Indango and Matamba. She was a rider. She was the daughter of King Kiluanji and he put that warrior spirit in her she was trained and very skilled in martial arts and in weaponry this woman was a beast she was born with the umbilical cord wrapped around her neck and during these times this was a sign of power at birth a lady predicted that one day she would grow up to be queen but everyone else thought her brother Mbandi would be king one day. At an early age, Nzinga soaked up game from her father every day. All the way up until his death in 1617. Her brother Mbandi took over as king and he was always extremely jealous of his sister. This dude Mbandi killed Nzinga's son because he felt like once the son grew up that he would try to assassinate him and take over the throne. Then after he killed her son, he ordered the sterilization of Nzinga to make sure that she never has a kid again. Now after this, she fled to Matamba because she feared for her life. Later, he reached out to his sister because he needed her assistance. During the war against the Portuguese, he was getting destroyed. The Portuguese was giving him that work and he needed his sister's assistance because she spoke their language. Nzinga was hesitant at first, but then she agreed because she loved her people. She loved Ndango, which is Angola today. She wanted to save her homeland, so she accepted under one condition. 
She wanted to be put in a position of power. She accepted and Mbandi granted her wishes. When she arrived and she went to the meeting with the Portuguese, all of the men were sitting down during this meeting. During the 1600s, it was extremely disrespectful to not offer you a seat. During this time, this was the equivalent of spitting in someone's face in 2020. They gave her a mat on the floor to kneel instead of sitting down. So with this act of blatant disrespect, she stared at him and she made one of her servants get on all four while she sat on his back during the meeting. This was about a peace treaty. They both agreed on the peace treaty. The conditions were, from here on out, the Portuguese, they will call off the troops if Queen Nzinga forces the Ndongo people to convert to Christianity, everyone had to get baptized, and from that day forward, they make trades with each other. According to some accounts, they say after the meeting with the Portuguese, Queen Nzinga made her servant stand up and she killed him and said the queen doesn't use the same seat twice. Once she returned back to Ndongo, it was a celebration. Everybody praised her. Mbandi watched on, embarrassed, full of rage and jealousy, and now known as the king that failed him, couldn't take it any longer. He ended she up committing suicide by drinking poison. Everybody now Nzinga was in charge. She was queen. Nzinga had a nephew named Kaza, who was the son of Mbandi. Years ago, he fled Ndongo and he joined up with the rival squad. See, it was hard to touch those Ngala people. They kept a low profile. During the 17th century, there lived groups of marauders and mercenaries known collectively as the Umbengala. They were notorious across the continent. Some stories even claim that they were cannibals, who engaged in ritual sacrifice and stole adolescents to fill their ranks. But despite their reputation, both the Portuguese and the locals sought the Mbengala's service. Nzinga herself had fought beside them more than once. And it was into the Mbengala's care that her brother placed Nzinga's nephew, confident perhaps that there was no safer place for the boy to be from Nzinga. But always crafty and relentless, Nzinga had an idea. She sought out the leader of the Mbengala band and made a great show of expressing her love. Despite his initial misgivings, her quarry submitted to her affections, and the two arranged to be married. But before the ceremony even concluded, Nzinga took a hold of her brother's son, slew him, and threw the boy's corpse into a river, declaring to all that she had finally avenged her son. And with that, her throne was safe. Meanwhile, Nzinga's Portuguese contacts knew nothing of these matters. Having only seen Nzinga at her most agreeable, they had no cause to think of her as a threat. She started flirting with one of their top people. She finessed this dude and even convinced him to marry her. At their wedding ceremony, she spotted her nephew, Kaza. Seen him, stabbed him, killed him. She dropped the Christian beliefs with her people and the slaves from the Portuguese, if they fled to Ndongo, she set them free. This fired up the Portuguese. Now they were in a rage and the war was back on. But she knew that they didn't have the power to fight the Portuguese head on like that. So she fled to Matamba and she took as many people as she could with her. Surrounded by enemies, Nzinga needed a new plan. So unable to expel the Portuguese, she developed a strategy to suppress their expansion. The first tactic was political and economic. She maneuvered the remains of her forces between the Portuguese and the lands where they conducted slave raids. And second, she reached out to Catholic missionaries in Angola, claiming she wanted to replace local traditions with Catholic beliefs. Now, whether this newfound piety was sincere is hard to say. But if it was an act, it was a convincing one. 
Catholic missionaries became enthralled with Nzinga, some even volunteering to serve as her political intermediaries in Africa and Europe. Whether moved by Nzinga's embrace of their faith, or simply relieved to see their enemies so humbled, the Portuguese opened peace negotiations. In 1656, they freed her sister, and, after many long years, acknowledged Nzinga as the undisputed ruler of Matamba. And that is when Nzinga changed tactics yet again. Because now that she was at peace with Portugal, she could finally settle old scores. The Umbengala, the marauding warrior society that had sheltered her brother, were still operating. And Zinga had mixed opinions of them, sometimes even enlisting them as allies when they weren't fighting for the Portuguese. But it was time to end that dance. Despite being old enough to be a great grandmother to some of her soldiers, she personally led a campaign into their lands, decapitated their leader, and brought his head to the Portuguese governor. According to some accounts, Nzinga traveled with about 50 men, and at night, she chose two of them to have a fight with each other for the right to lay in bed with her at night. She later teamed up with the Dutch and ended up taking Ndongo back from the Portuguese. She continued to have many battles with the Portuguese, and she always fought against slavery. She earned just as much respect as any man can earn. She was a warrior and she always demanded a certain level of respect. One time in battle, she cut the head off one of the leaders of the Ngala people. Now the Ngala people were some serious, vicious warriors. Her resistance to colonization and slavery as it was practiced by the European power spread far and wide. Her legacy has an American connection. The Portuguese name Angola comes from the term king or Ingala. It has been said during the 18th and 19th centuries, roughly seven out of every 10 Africans imported into Charleston, South Carolina came from the area called Angola near the Congo River. The language patterns of the people who occupy the sea islands off the coast of Georgia and South Carolina are very close to the structure of Kimbundu, a Bantu language, the same one spoken by Nzinga. The Sea Island slaves called themselves and their language Gullah, and that's derived from Angola. In South America, the Portuguese colony of Brazil received a large number of Angolan captives. In modern day Brazil, descendants of these slaves still hold ceremonies to celebrate Nzinga's resistance against slavery. Nzinga sent warriors to Brazil to organize a rebellion. And one of her warriors named Zumbi escaped from a plantation and set up a colony for runaway slaves in Brazil. Queen Nzinga ruled for 37 years. And when she ruled, she demanded her respect. After she passed away, everything crumbled. Queen Nzinga was born 1582, and she passed away in 1663. She passed away in her sleep. Queen, warrior, Queen Nzinga. Please make sure you follow the History With No Chaser Facebook page, the Instagram page, and subscribe to the kids channel. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. And let me know what you think in the comment section. Her cultural campaign, along with her record of military victories, had shielded her lands from foreign occupation. And even on her deathbed, she begged her counselors to continue her efforts, to ensure that the country became what she hoped it would be, and to allow a priest to bury her in the Christian manner. And so passed Queen Nzinga, a woman who, despite being one of the best documented rulers in early modern Africa, still presents a puzzle. Her record, from ambitious noble, to guerrilla fighter, to consummate diplomat, to religious reformer, is still haunted by myths conjured by her enemies, not to mention a few constructed by Nzinga herself. In Matamba, she had built a state on equal footing with the burgeoning Portuguese colony, 
and in doing so, created a legacy of pride and self-rule that people still celebrate in modern Angola. They've printed coins in her image and made films of her exploits. And in the city of Luanda, where her opulent embassy met the Portuguese, stands a bronze statue of one of the first to fight for Angola's freedom, Queen Nzinga. Welcome aboard. This is Build and Destroy. I am H Rap B. This is a podcast about my people, our lives, our families, our successes, and our history. Coming to you live and direct every Saturday. Or you can catch us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Deezer, iTunes, or wherever you download your podcast at. You can also come back to Spreaker.com, look for Build for This Network. And you'll be in tune. Now let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. This is H. Rap B. Thank you for tuning in to Build and Destroy. I am your host today. Thank you for tuning in. I am expecting a special guest, but until he calls in, I want to welcome you and thank you. This is a podcast, as I say every week. What that means is there is no such thing as I missed your show. This is On Demand Entertainment. You will be able to go to Spreaker.com, Spotify, or wherever, iTunes, iHeartRadio, wherever you download your podcast from. It is not a difficult task. Please do that. And as, before you do that, I want you to hit like and share on your social media outlets. It's been real. It's been, a, it's been an insane week. We have a lot to talk about, and I have a lot to share with you guys. As I do before each one of my shows, I like to thank and send respects to my ancestors. If you send respects to your ancestors and the people who are in your family, who are here, who put you in the position that you're in, (coughs) you get blessings and protection from those very people, and you'll live a wonderful life. Or, as that's the way I was taught. Now, with that being said, I have to say, I have to give homage to people from my family. These people are the Harper family, the Bailey family, the Turner family, the Battle, Cotton, Chris, Lansdowne, Liggins, Duncan, and Williams. You all know those. That's my mom, my dad, my sisters, my brothers. We are in the building at all times. Now, I have my guests available. How you doing, Ben? How you doing, Ben? Oh, man. I'm having issues with the sound. Uh, I don't know how to fix this on the run. It looks like I'm going to continue to try. And Ben is going to... Oh, my God. You know what, Ben? I'm having issues with the sound. I don't know what's going on. Um, um, I can't fix it at this moment. I'm going to have to have you call back. And... Uh, or we'll reschedule another time to when I get the sound on point. Well, until I get that squared away, what I'm going to have to do is just continue with the show. I want to thank each and every one of you guys for tuning in. As I stated, it's been an interesting week, and I actually have an entire show prepared for, you know, I always prepare for the worst. Um, 
as I was saying, man, this is a situation where as we are in interesting times. Damn it. We're definitely in interesting times at this point. And uh, I want to put us in a situation to where as we as a community are better off than we were yesterday. And how I'm going to do that is I want to introduce you guys to some ways of knowing. And what I mean, when I, when I say ways of knowing, what I mean is this. When you talk about ways of knowing, these are things in which you as an individual will be able to put yourself in a situation to where as you can know exactly what's going on and we need to be more civically minded. And what I mean by civically minded is this. Being civically minded is if we're going to live in the United States of America, and I know a lot of people are saying, hey man, we need to leave. Uh, this is some BS and things of that nature. We keep saying those things, but most of us can't afford to move out of our current neighborhoods. You can't afford to move from a horrible neighborhood to a decent neighborhood or a decent neighborhood to an affluent neighborhood. So how in the hell are we going to pack up and move out of the country and move to Africa? So it sounds good when people say, hey, man, we need to get up out of this country. But if we if we are to get out of the country, I'm going to need somebody to explain to me how can you move from you can't move from neighborhood to neighborhood, but you can move out of the country. So when you're talking, that's like, you know, talking about those kinds of things, let's just be reasonable. And if and to be reasonable, I need us to be more civically minded. And if we're going to be civically minded, then what we have to do is understand how this thing works. Uh, it's been a whole lot of talk about cancel culture over the last few days. People are going in and uh, this guy is that and that guy is this. And we're having issues with this guy speaking to these people and this, that and the third. And believe it or not, man. I understand the concept because we have people who are saying that they're down with one thing and they're down with the next thing, but they're really not down with anything. And when you speak up and speak loudly, loudly, and you're loud wrong, you present a problem for the rest of us. I'm not here to excoriate anyone. I'm not here to put anybody in their place. What I am here to do is hopefully enlighten people on how things work. And when you enlighten people on how things work, hopefully what you're able to do is put yourself in a situation to whereas you are uh, putting yourself in a position to win and not lose. And when you put yourself in a position to win and not lose, you put yourself in a position to obtain equality. And that's what we claim to be looking for. We're not trying to dominate anyone. We're not trying to destroy anyone. We're not trying to put anyone in a bad situation. What we're trying to do is advance the culture, put ourselves in situations to where as we can be respected to the utmost and we will be treated like human beings. And that's the goal for people in my community here in the United States of America. Point blank, period. I'm looking around the table, I'm looking around the country, for well, the table, so to speak, but I'm looking around the country and I'm hearing constant arguments, constant disagreements. And what we need to do is come up with a plan so we can reach one goal at the same time or set one goal. Let's not even reach one goal at the same time. Because more than likely, we're not going to reach this goal at the same time. Let's just be honest. Nothing happens in lockstep. Because it may be something that I see and you don't see. And it may take you a second or two to wake up. But the, one of the things that I want to talk about, actually, I want to talk to Ben. I'll be pissed off about that, being perfectly honest with you. But I got, you know, the show goes on. Sorry for Ben. Sorry for wasting your time, Ben. We're going to have to make more time for you because I really want to talk to you. And thank you for staying in the chat room. But what we have to do is realize this. And, and this is the number one thing we need to realize. We all have common interests. We all have common uh, 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 goals. But we don't have common allies. And what I mean by a common ally is this. You must use the powers that be to the best of your abilities to get what we want to be. And when we are not civically minded, we put ourselves in a situation to where at the end of the day, we're going to lose. You know, we can tell certain people to do certain things and we can recommend that other people do other things. But if we're not doing 
what we're supposed to do. What we're going to do is lose ultimately. There are no permanent allies. There are only permanent issues. Point blank, period. That's it. Point blank, period. You heard the reason I use Queen of Zynga today at the intro of the show is because by hook or by crook, she got what she wanted. She got what she needed. And that's just the end of it. A lot of people uh, uh, will say, oh, man, that was then. This is now. It's this thing. It's this African tradition called Sankofa. Sankofa, when you look up Sankofa, you will see a bird with an egg in its mouth looking backwards. And what that means is you must look back. Look at a problem. Shout out to Dr. Greg Carr for introducing me to this. Karen Hunter. You must look back in order to go forward. In order to go forward, you must look back. And what that and the premise is, the problems that you are running into today are problems that have been run into before. If you don't agree, it's this portion of the country, a time in history in this United States of America called Reconstruction. During Reconstruction, we were going through the exact same thing we're doing now. Voter suppression, discrimination, and potentially being at the, at the behest of of terrorism, domestic terrorism, because there was no outside terrorism. And at the end of the day, George Washington was a terrorist. If you go to England and go to school, he's a terrorist. He's been lied to that man. You know what I mean? But we must turn our heads, look into the books, look into history, look into the times that, that have expired before us, and then we'll see how our ancestors were able to encapsulate success and move forward. We have more people in Congress. We have more people in House of Representatives. We have more people in in, in country government then than we do now. Again, remember, at Reconstruction, you're coming directly from slavery into a new world. And when you come into that new world, what you're seeing is this. You're seeing an entirely different situation turn into paradise. I'm going to say that again so you understand. You see tyranny. You see the beating of our people. You see the raping of our sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, and grandmothers. Aunts and grandmothers. You see the abduction of our children. uh, 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 The inability to intellectually grow. Turn into people who are suited and booted and prepared to run the country. They extended themselves throughout the country and created towns, counties, and businesses directly out of poverty. Abject poverty out, out of tyranny. So when you talk about underfunded schools, when you talk about the inability to do whatever you want to do, all you have to do is look back and see what your ancestors did and then you move forward and you'll get the information, you'll get the keys to the car success. Let's just be honest, point blank, period, period, full stop. Now let's go forward. The reason I'm bringing this up is the reason these people knew these things is your ancestors used to sit at the feet of the people who control the country. See, it's one thing to be able to read and, and, and have an inability to, uh, to read and know what's going on. But you had your ancestors doing this while it, under the direct, while the, the, the boot of tyranny was on their neck. They knew about the uh, United States Constitution without being able to read. Some of them taught themselves how to read, taught themselves how to write, and kept it, uh, as my mom would say, keep that under your hat. They kept it in their heads and in their hearts, knowing at some point I will get out of this. Fast forward 200 years, me, you, and others, we have the ability to read, but we refuse to read, refuse to research, we refuse to take the necessary steps to be successful. Don't you see a problem with this situation? Again, you look back, see how to go forward and solve the problems that are in front of you. During this period called the Reconstruction, you had the Democratic Party being invented because the Republican Party was the only party that was available. People who were called Dixiecrats enter. They create the Democratic Party. They fund the Ku Klux Klan. And this is the America that you are living in right today. A lot of people don't understand that people in those in those time periods understood the law because the people who wrote the laws, the people who controlled the government were discussing these things right in front of these people. These people, our ancestors were standing there listening to these people create laws and spread the word word of mouth just as easily as you do on the internet today. But we 
for some reason believe, oh man, they holding us back, they trying to stop from doing these things. All you have to do is look at your ancestors and you'll get all the answers. That's it, man. It's it's not it's not some magical path to uh, 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 success. You use what you have to get what you need and then you move forward. That's it. But what we do is, as a community, it seems we have gotten comfortable with complaining. And I don't like that. I really don't like the fact that we've gotten comfortable with complaining. It's, it's a sad commentary. It is a sad commentary that we know how to tell each other what we don't do. We've actually bought into the propaganda of black people are lazy, black people are inefficient, black people don't care. And these are ideas that are brought about by white nationalists like the president, like the president of the United States and the people who support him. We've also, something else I don't like is we are apologetic for things that are done to us. Why are we so comfortable apologizing for being put under tyranny and the tyranny affects the behavior of the very people that you are complaining about? See, I need you to compartmentalize for a second. Your brothers and your sisters, not your blood brothers or, or family brothers, but the brothers and sisters in the community, oh, we're going to have to start calling each other brothers and sisters again too, but that's later on in the conversation. I want you to take it, put yourself in bondage mentally. Take yourself back 157 years. That's how long uh, people have, quote unquote, been free in this country. If you were looking at the community today, how do you think those people feel? Wait a minute, y'all can go to school, y'all can uh, go to the library, y'all have computers and things that'll pull up information on your hand, and you're doing worse off than we were doing, or as a matter of fact, according to Dr. Claude Anderson, one of the most respected economists in the United States of America today, 1863, black people own one half of one percent of the wealth in the United States of America today, uh, at that point, 1863. 157 years. Here we go. Fast forward 2020. Black people own one half or one percent of the wealth in the United States of America today. How is that humanly possible for us to make zero progress? See, what you perceive as progress is really a concession. I'm going to say that again. What you perceive as progress is really a concession. And what a concession is, I'm going to give you something to make you think you're moving forward but you're really not moving forward. You're stuck in the same rut that you were in. And you are not getting any, you're not getting any better. Because guess what? If you were still in bondage, don't you think the technology that would have been developed? So you, just like GPS and tracking devices that they put into a, a, a pet, don't you think they put that in you by now and let you go to the Bahamas and things like that and then you come back? People evolve over time. And those things... Well, they, they gave you basically more slack on the road. You know, just like you do with one of your pets. You have a 50 foot chain, a 10 foot chain. You got a more aggressive pet. You're going to have him on a 10 foot chain so he won't go and bite no neighbors. Then you got a more a free flowing pet that's friendly with all your neighbors. Everybody can rub him. You give him a 30, 40, 50 foot chain so he can run all over the yard. But you know, when he gets close to the chain and it's a young person on the other side of that chain, he'll rub him and he can keep going. So the more aggressive brothers and sisters, they'll give them a short chain. People who have bought into the society, they'll give them a long chain. Let's just be honest. And I hate to use animalistic comparisons, but those are the only ones that fit what I'm saying. And I'm hoping to hit hard so you will understand exactly where I'm coming from. So, our ancestors will be shamed. I'm just going to use myself. They would be shamed. They'd be shamed. A lot of things that I've done, they'd be shamed the fact that I was a college dropout. I went back and got my degree. They'll be ashamed that I'm a relatively intelligent dude that hasn't applied all his skills to be as successful as possible. They'll be ashamed that I don't do as much civically as I can to support my brothers and sisters. Another reason I want the brother Ben for BS3 to come on and allow me to segue to the Ben for BS3 segment of the conversation. I need Ben for BS3 to come on so we can talk about his network so the people who listen to my network and listen to his network, the people who listen to my net, his network and listen to mine, and we can continue to grow. See, the thing is, I have a very, very very aggressive tone about me so I'm not for everybody 
Ben is, is the polar opposite of me, but we're really saying the same thing. We, we, we truly have the exact same goal. So why would some of the brothers and sisters ah, rap a little, rap a little to aggress them? They gonna listen to Ben. And there's some people that listen to Ben and say, man, you need to be saying this. They may not tell Ben, but they're thinking that. And they can listen to rap and then all people come together. We can continue to blow this thing up. That's why I wanted them on here. I need the people who listen to me to listen to Ben from BS3 so we can continue to grow our empires so we can support the needs of our community. Allow me to digress. We as a community don't work together enough. The reason we are hurting the way we are is because I'm just going to give you my city, for example. The city of Chicago, y'all think it's the most violent place in America. Y'all think it's Beirut. Fun fact. The most dangerous city in the state of Illinois is Peoria, Illinois. Fact. But that's not what I'm talking about. When you're in Chicago, you're a west side person. It's kind of super hood. South side people are more college educated, more, more brothers and sisters. Out there, college educated, they come from two family homes, yada yada yada. This, that, and the third. It's more of a white collar situation with, with it versus a blue collar situation. Plumbers, mechanics on one side, people who work in downtown wear shoes and ties on the other side. Believe it or not, the brothers and sisters in my city from the south side of Chicago look down on the people on the west side of Chicago because they blue collar, they're more rough, they're more rough around the edges, they're more hard nosed, and oh man, they're hood, they're ghetto, what's wrong with them, yada yada yada, right? But guess what? When the Gestapo pull you over, they don't know what part of town you're from. You're just that word that we don't like. But we, we act as if we don't understand that anymore. Because in other cult in, in the culture of the United States of America, you got the greasers. You know, these are old terms, these are super old terms. You got the the the, 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 the wops and all these negatory terms. You know, you got the, the hard no, you know, you got the, the upper crust and things like that. So we for whatever reason, our community has duplicated those same cast systems. But when you are at the bottom of the barrel, you don't have the ability, you don't have time to be segregating amongst each other. But we do that here in Chicago. Here's the even crazier part. Me, personally, I was born on the west side of Chicago. My mom was blue collar. My dad was, uh, my mom was, uh, uh, my dad was blue collar. My mom was white collar. She worked for the government. My dad was a tool and die guy for a Right? I was raised on the north side of Chicago. For whatever reason, people in Chicago believe people on the north side, they got a little change. Guess why? I know why. Because white people live up there. So, me, people like Big Illinois, people like Kim Webb, people like Rhonda S., and other people who, who support me in the chat room that y'all know, or y'all familiar with, they think that we have some advantage. Not knowing that the very good times projects that a lot of us watch throughout the nation, that, that was right outside of our neighborhood, and some of us even come from those projects. But when you say you're from the west and north side, people from the south side and the west side are mentally intimidated by us. They go, oh, they should live around white folks. But guess what? We were 30 cents away from a quarter just like your black ass. None of us were rich. Well, some of us were rich. But it was in a very eclectic community. We had the Mohe family. Millionaires. Honest to God, millionaires. Living in our community. Uh, we had Tree Pops, my man Tree, his pop lady, he's a sheriff. And we had our way down to pro people in the project and assisted living. And we all got along. See, a lot of people want to make this thing about, we used to get along 10,000 years ago in the 40s, in the 50s, in the 60s. I they grew up in the 80s and we used to get along. We went to this store called Terry's. Grocery store owned by a black man named Terry, obviously. We went to Jerry's to eat our restaurant. We, we didn't eat at McDonald's. We went to Jerry's. We went to the pizza joint. I can't think of it right now, but I'll think of it shortly. Black-owned pizza place. Uh, we went to the China Dog, black-owned Chinese food. We went to a movie theater that was in our movie, and it wasn't black-owned, but it was in our community. And we didn't, we didn't have to leave our community to get what we wanted. This lets you know if Terry, Jerry, and a couple other people can service the entire community in any way we want. Chester's Pizza, thank you, Ron. If we could service that in the 80s, we can do that in 2020. We must remove the concept of somebody you better than somebody who looks just like you. All you are is a link in the people that look just like you chain. Period. But we don't want to do that because 
we've bought into the situation to where as you are duplicating the oppressor's behavior. And anytime you du duplicate somebody who's oppressing people's behavior, you in essence become a devil. And when you duplicate demonic behavior, you get demonic results. Period. These things are continuously holding us back because we don't want to accept the fact we are all we have. And look, if you want to continue to buy into that nonsense, please do so. But do so over there. Don't intermingle with us until you can get a leg up and then burst into other situations. Now, am I telling you not to go downtown and get the job with the shirt and tie the big building and make hundreds of thousands of dollars and become a CEO and make billions of dollars? No, I am not. What I am telling you is this. Everybody that looks like you is in the same boat. Because if you let, if you drive around in that Lexus 300, you're going to be on the side of the road, the road, side of the road, getting harassed by Popo -po at some point. That's just the way it works. So for us to continue to just complain, 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 what we need to do is stop complaining. Get on the, as James Brown said, get on the good foot and move in the same direction. If we all want to go to, let's just use a fictitious, well, it's not a real, it's a real address. It's 2300 Jackson Street in Gary, Indiana. If the goal is to get there, you can come from Detroit, you can come from Cleveland, you can come from Cincinnati, you can come from Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Louis, California, New York, uh, 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 Baltimore, Atlanta, Alabama. But the goal is to get to 2300 Jackson Street, right? So let's stop looking at the methods and ways in which we choose to get there and let's just make sure we all get there. And the reason I'm bringing this up is this is an election year in which we have never seen before. How many freaking times have we heard the saying, man, we did this is not like anything else you ever heard. Yes, we've heard that 10, 11, 12, 13 million times. Every time it's an election, we hear that. We hear it. But here's the time that is most important. Civics. High school civics. It's just what we need right now. You know, elementary school civics is what we need. First and foremost, if you don't believe this is a very important uh, election, I want you to understand this. Okay. Every 10 years, since the beginning of the country, they take assessment of how many people in the country, and that's how they divide up the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the finances in regards to needs like health care, road repair, so forth and so on. Everything that you think is important, that's how it's divvied up. Oh man, I ain't giving these people my information. They just want to track me, blah, blah, blah. Okay. 1942. 43. 1943, it was the Act Passed, Chapter 10 of the United States Constitution that states after the uh, Japanese people were released from entertainment camps. This is what I want you to understand. There was laws passed that the United States Census Bureau can never share the information that is given to them. The only thing they can do is tell you how many people that live in the community, how many people live on the block, how many people live in the area. They cannot tell you H. Rob lives there. They cannot tell you Jew from Houston lives there. They cannot tell you Big Illinois lives there. They can just tell you that this, between 2300 Monroe and 2400 Monroe, there are 85 people that live in that area. That's determined how much your schools will be taken care of, how many times your roads will be paid, that's how I can tell how many buses that need to be if, if most bus services even if they're independently owned like Chicago Transit Authority, CTA the Chicago Transit Authority a lot of bus lines have been cut because every 10 years, brothers and sisters do not fill out the census guess what, this is the one time if you freaked around and lied if you didn't tell the truth and say it's three people living in the house, you said it's eight that's the only that's the one time that'll benefit you just lying. Because, oh man, it's 32 people in this classroom. Because the Census Bureau only reported 800 people in that area, so it only need 45 teachers, and now you got 42 people in each class. But if you just said, I got eight kids, and when you only have four, then guess what? You have more funds allocated, all these kids trying to get these ebooks and things like that so you can do school at home. Guess what? You have those naturally because you fill out the census property. If you don't think this is important, civics lesson number one, it is. Because 
People do not have it. Tell you what. When was the last time you walked up to a homeless man and asked him for something? Because he doesn't have anything, right? He's homeless. He's destitute. He's indigent for a reason. Because he don't have the, uh, uh, the, 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 the financial capability to maintain a life that we think is livable. So he's in the streets panhandling potentially or living in a homeless shelter hoping to get into a better situation. Guess what? The Census Bureau allows your state, county, or, or, or district allocates more funds so that guy can get affordable housing or that woman can get affordable housing. He gets affordable housing. He's off the street. He's less likely to rob you, hurt a young person, or he'll get the mental assistance that he need if he's not in, in, in a wayward way. Another thing. The Census Bureau. These roles are horrible. You didn't fill out the Census Bureau. And if you don't agree with me, I understand, but it's a reason that these things are happening. And that's what's not happening. You guys are not buying into the system. If you don't buy into the system, you can't expect the system to work for you. Rule number two, as my man Ben Echo, we complain too much. No action. You feel like, oh, guess what? The Census Bureau is supposed to run through the end of the census taking is supposed to run through the end of October, especially if it's extended, it was attempted to be extended through the end of November because of the COVID-19 situation. And you didn't have Census Bureau workers walking the streets doing what they was supposed to do. What 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 was happening was this. What has happened is this. Your president, Donald J. Trump, you know, the same guy that 63, 100 million. You guys stayed at home and didn't vote for him or. Or uh, Hillary Rodden Clinton. Y'all didn't vote for either one of them. And guess what? He's in play. And guess what? Now your, your, your community is underfunded. Going to a hospital. People laying in the hallways on beds due to this COVID-19 situation because the hospital does not have the funding to support the health needs of the people in your community. You didn't fill out the census. Those hospitals will not be getting an influx of money. You will not be getting the health care that you need and more of your friends and family members can potentially die. This is what happens. This is what happens. And you didn't take the necessary steps. And now it's time to complain, right? Well, rap, you told us to get people elected that you trust. I also told you to fill out the Census Bureau. And I've been saying this for the entire 2020. I've been saying this since January. And if you didn't do it, if anything goes wrong in your community, all you have to do next time you get a big Something doesn't go right in your community that the government is supposed to handle and people's the funds should be allocated to you and yours. I'm going to need you to go to the bathroom and look at the, uh, look at the mirror and say, you big dummy. Seriously. And I'm not kidding. It may seem, it may seem funny. You know, I mean, that was funny rap, but it's the truth because you didn't do it. The dude has snatched the rugs, rugs, the feet up under your rug. And I'm mean, at the rug up under your feet from up under your feet. And now you stuck. Register to vote. Register to vote. Get engaged. Get involved. Get into it. If you don't understand, again, the reason I use the analogy, have you ever asked a homeless person for money? Because you can't take something from people that they don't have or, or something that a homeless man that's extremely valuable because more than likely everything he's had has been stripped from him. People only take things that are valuable from you. You can't register to vote. I'm going to give you a perfect example. State of Virginia, their last day to register to vote was Wednesday. Guess what happened? Uh, 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 the internet cord to the website, the register to vote on the last day was cut. Why? And in the hell is everybody rushing to vote on the last day? Only God knows. But that's what happened. Now they had an injunction put in. They have it extended to Friday due to that uh, technological glitch, so to speak. But look, no one, who the hell is cutting the cord? Who the hell knows when the cords are? But those cords were taken and People were potentially going to be left off the uh, 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 voting rolls. Now, what I want to know is why you wait to the last minute? Two is if vote is not important, why are they trying to strip you up? There's a lot of people that sit around, sit on their ass, sit on their hands, and complain, man, that vote stuff ain't yada, yada, yada. You know what? Vote don't mean nothing. If you vote for the same doofus, First of all, why is it that some people have been in off? Your neighborhood is horrible. The neighborhood you grew up in is horrible. And you've been voting for John Doe, the state rep, 
John Doe, the the uh, the alderman, John Doe, the state senator for the last 25 years. He been in that seat, or Jane Doe been in those seats all these years, and nothing has improved. So you mean to tell me you said in this community all this time nobody has done anything for you, and you didn't even take the time to change it? Just hear yourself. But we complain, and we complain. Oh man, have you ever gone to a city council meeting? Have you ever gone to a block club meeting? Who's your block club president? Who's your city representative? Who's your state representative? You don't know. But you complain. You know, like the, the age old tale, Barack Obama didn't do nothing for black people. Black people, what do we want from Barack Obama? And then you say something that people have been fighting for for 157 years. Reparations. So did you ask Obama for reparations? Did you put together a package? Oh, no. Know why you didn't ask for reparations? Because in 1992, Shirley Chisholm, the Congressional Black Caucus, NAACP, Student Nonviolent Coordination, Head of Astoka, Carl Michael, a.k.a. Uh, Kwame Torre, H. Rap Brown, the original, uh, uh, and others met in Gary, Indiana in 1972, and they put together a plan, a progressive plan, that a lot of people saying that they putting together now, that plan been in place since 1972 and before that, same Congressional Black Caucus did it in the, in, the, in the 50s and before that in the 1800s when our people were immediately, immediately emancipated, same group of people, same type of people put together the exact same plan about reparations, finances and things of that nature. So people who come to you now talking about reparations, this has been a 157 year old fight and uh, they still fight. But you didn't know that because you've never taken the time to look into the history of your community. And what's going on, it's easier to sit back and complain laterally. What in the hell am I going to call Ben from BS Street Sports and Entertainment for and complain about the government? And it's a dude right here in my city that I can call and complain. I can't stand his ass. I'm not going to say his name here, brother. I'll push him in the street if I could, but yeah, that's nothing. Walter Burnett, fuck that. Uh, well, I could call Walter Burnett and complain. And then I can call Dick Durbin and complain. And then I can call uh, the, the governor of the state of Illinois and complain. And then I can call somebody else. But we don't do that. We call Ben from BS3. We call RC from Duluth, Minnesota. RC from Minnesota, Ben from Texas. They can't help me. They cannot help me. But we do that. We do it all the time. Civics and lesson number three. No who are who's in charge of your community please know who's in charge of your community all right the reason you need to know who's in charge of your community and if all those are looking at the misspelling of the entertainment i just looked at it i deleted that so uh i'm not a big guy anymore but back to how the man we must know what we're up against we do. The reason I'm even talking about this, man, civic representative number three, those in charge. I need you to find out who your state representative is. I need to find out who your alderman is. I need you to find out when the Zoom city council meetings are. I need you to start making complaints about the roads. I need you to start making complaints about the schools. I need you to start making complaints about everything. See, because every two years, your state representative gets reelected. Your congressman is reelected every two years. Twice every presidential situation. Two years from now, the election goes down. You need to be knowing. You need to be finding out who that is today. And when you find out who it is, then you know you can go to who is voting in your interest. People of Illinois, judges.org. Judges.org. There are over 60 judges in the city of Chicago alone that need you to confirm their seats. People in Chicago. I know about all the city. Can't tell you about this. Judges.org. You can go to see who voted in your interest. There is a focus group that have gone through this for you on judges.com. Judges.org. Judges.org. And they'll tell you who should you should vote for. Of the 60 judges that are up for reconfirmment, six of them got a less than satisfactory uh, rating. One of them got less than 
uh, an organization called the Black Attorneys. They said this dude got a three percent. So this is how you keep your brothers and sisters out of jail. This is how civics work. Don't just vote down the ballot. Find out what these people are voting for and voting against. My man, uh, Big Mo from Tiger Park, the Grace family, they from South Carolina. Lindsey Graham is running for election in South Carolina. This dude is brazen enough to say on national television while he's attempting to appoint a United States Supreme Court nominee. Did you think it was time to go back to the good old days of segregation? Nobody said anything. The good old days of segregation. When you have someone who has the ability to appoint someone to the highest court of the land then, and they are brazen enough to make the statement the good old days of segregation, basically put the colors back in place, you have a civic duty, a moral duty, and, a, uh, and you are forced to put your first, best foot forward to get this dude out the way because he is a threat to your being. You got kids, you got grandkids, you got nieces, nephews, cousins. You're not doing this for you. Because, hell, we 35, 45, 55 years old. We're doing this for our 25, 15, and 10-year-old people. Because this dude has been on court three days longer than baseball. Been out. And he is voting for the destruction of people. You don't understand why civics is important? Okay. This dude named Alex Jackson here in the state of Illinois was fired. He was fired by a, 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 a transportation company. The lady, Amy Cohen, or whatever her name is, I can't, I don't know her name. And it's not important because she don't get the job because we didn't go out and move this dude, Donald J. Trump. She presided over a case that this dude took to the civil, I mean, he took to the Supreme Court of the state of Illinois. And he, I mean, it's a circuit court. And guess what he said? She said, this dude was fired because he was called the N-word. At his place of employment, he was subsequently fired and he sued the company. He said, they fired me. I was in a hostile work environment and they fired me. And she, and I quote, though the N-word is an inflammatory word, but he didn't, he didn't prove to us how being called the N-word put him in a hostile work environment. Mind you, this lady has two black children. They always throw the Haitian part in, but uh, I don't know too many light-skinned Haitians. I'm just saying. And, and according to Dick and Dale, I'm from Haiti, so y'all know. Y'all know. Y'all know. I know. But I'm one of the light-skinned Haitian dudes. But on the, on the serious side, being called that word Thank you. Thank you all. Amy Coney Barry. Thank you already. How in the hell can you live in a world in which you can say being called nigger I wanted to say at that time being called nigger is not inflammatory because all the people that will be called niggas that I know if somebody outside the culture called them nigger it's a hostile situation. Let alone a hostile work environment. If you call that word in public, you are going to be ready to be, so there's going to be some hostility. But according to this woman who has three children who look like from our community, two children from our community living in our home, I don't give a damn if they're from, directly from the motherland. They look like us. They could be called nigga in an inflammatory way. And she said, nah, nah, it, it couldn't have been. It could be, just could be a misunderstanding. So how many times is she using that word around her house, around those Asian children, for her to believe that it's not, not inflammatory? This same woman who told us that she cried when she saw Brother Floyd get murdered by the Gestapo, a.k.a. the police. This same woman that said that. So... This woman is about to be appointed to the highest court in the land. I'm still angry about my damn sound, but I'm going over my show. This woman is being, about to be appointed to the highest court in the land. And when you appoint someone like that, who cannot see your pain, your tyranny, your suffering, how can you possibly hope to get a fair shake? 
When you got people like Mitch McConnell that talk about democratic cities like Baltimore, democratic cities like Chicago, democratic cities like Detroit have been running to the ground forever. How about this? Another peak is cities. Republican states like Kentucky, poorest in the land, top three poorest in the land, but Republican-run states like Alabama, Republican-run states like Mississippi, three of the poorest states in the United States of America. Nobody talks about that. See, this is why we have no permanent outlines. We only have permanent issues. We don't have, I'm going to say it again, no permanent outlines, permanent issues. Now, when you're dealing with this kind of situation, this is why your rights would be struck. Because Roe versus Wade, Roe versus Wade is going to be stripped away. Gay gay marriage is going to be stripped away. Some of my brothers in here listening, brothers and sisters listening to this, man, I'm sick of that gay shit anyway, man. What the That ain't got nothing to do with me. This is something that may kick one of his justice in his ass. Because guess what? If it's illegal to marry who you want, gay straight, then at what point do they say, White people can't marry black people. Clarence Thomas, you might be next, bruh. But you side, you you're going with the party who claim they got your back. A lot of people have ganged up and slapped around the homie Ice Cube. Well, Mr. Ice Cube, he's not the homie no more. I, don't, I wasn't gonna go. I wasn't gonna take a side. I was gonna be neutral. But I'm on. I'm, uh, Ice Cube on some slugger shit to me. Uh, how about that? I'm gonna go ahead and jump out there. Yeah, I ain't never been the dude who need a whole lot of people to like me. No way. If you disagree, that's cool. I still got love for you. But to me, Ice Cube is on suck shit. And if you don't agree with me, Brian D. Williams on, H uh, on, on Facebook. I said on HBO. Brian D. Williams on Facebook. And I send you the clip of the boy making a goddamn fool of himself. Now, see, he want to ride up under the, uh, the, the index of and you got to talk to both sides. You know, you just can't talk to one side. You're right, bro. Again, that's why I keep making a statement. You have no permanent allies. You just have permanent issues. You should be able to talk to the other side, left and right, up and down. You know, you should be able to talk to who you want to talk to. But when you are talking to a, nar a known narcissist, that's a, that's a medical term. Look it up. If you're talking to a known pathological liar, if you're talking to a known bigot, what do you hope to obtain, Mr. Jackson? Because me personally, I'm going to say it right here, man. I wouldn't put another dime in Ice Cube pocket if he did the X-Rap B story, if he did the Brian D. Williams story, if he funded it. If Ice Cube come out with a podcast network and say, rap, we'll give you such and such and there's more money than I ever expected, I'm not taking it because I don't want to deal with the sucker. See, y'all can, oh man, Q, see, y'all, y'all, what, Steve Harvey, who I'm not a fan of, I used to, up until a couple of days ago, I was a fan of Ice Cube. A big time fan of Ice Cube. Steve Harvey, who I'm not a fan of, Steve Harvey might be doing sucker stuff Behind the behind the uh, uh the behind the scenes, I think he's a despicable human being. But you know what? I, he does a mentoring program for the young brothers. He take them down there to his home in Texas and do a whole lot of stuff in the community. He do a lot of stuff. I don't like him. I'm not a fan at all. But shout out to Steve Harvey for doing what he could. When you see what I'm saying, big ups to him. I can't be mad at the man. I think he is sucker, but he do some good stuff. But y'all cancel Steve Harvey. Man, look at him. He's a clown. Kanye. He's a clown. It goes without saying. The man walks around with a big nose and red shoes. He might just be a clown. But y'all cancel them immediately. Jim Brown. Oh, I can't believe he went out. We kicked him. But Ice Cube, he did the same thing. And then when the brother Roland Martin tried to talk to him like an adult, he turned, tried to turn it into a bottle shop conversation. Hey, what do you say, Ice Cube, when people say, where were you all this time? Do y'all know the dude who wrote, I never had dinner with the president. I never had dinner with the president. Y'all know, know Vaseline. You know, you know the dude who wrote, 
I want to kill Sam because he ain't my fucking uncle. Literally said on the Roller Martin show, well, I didn't know. I didn't know that all this was going on because I was being a rapper and an entertainer. So, I and, and when after George Floyd got killed, I stepped up and did what I had to do. Ice Cube, do you want me to believe that? Oh, so Ice Cube, you didn't know what was going on. So, when you didn't know what was going on, I'm assuming when you wrote that movie Friday and all that money started flowing in your pocket, you thought the money they didn't get in your pocket started trickling down to the rest of us. And now we're no longer living in abject, some of us are no longer living in abject poverty and we've just been kicking it all these years. Is that what you think Think about uh, the situation, Ice Cube? But again, Roland Martin started trying to talk to his brother about things that are going on and he could continue to meet him with Ant. And I didn't like that. I didn't see the one with Cuomo, my man, uh, RC, said uh, he embarrassed himself on uh, in both interviews. Uh, he's talking about the Chris Cuomo interview last night and the Roland Martin interview. And this dude is a millionaire and he's trying to act like he's doing something and he's on some revolutionary stuff. And he's not, man. And this is why civics are important. Because when you got some dude, some rapper, to quote Sean Price, I'm lying just like the rest of these dumbass rappers. Ice Cube must have known who he was talking about, rest in peace, Sean Price. Because this is a dude who sat on TV and said he didn't know all this was going on. Really? Ice Cube, man. But this is why we must get into civics. This is why we must get into history. This is why we must do what we have to do to take care of each other because for one, let's stop listening to dudes who can dance, rap, sing versus people like Sister Karen Hunter, Sister Brother Roland Martin, Brother Dr. Greg Cobb, and other people out here who've been put Joe Joe Madison, people who've been putting in the work for 20 plus years, doing the damn thing, nose to the grindstone, and know all the ins and outs of what's going on. Oh, how about this? How about, hold, hold, wait a minute. How about this? We step out on the land. Dr. Harry, I was exact. How about we step out on the land and read a book? Look, at, look into some stuff. Tell, send somebody to the H-Rap show. Listen to the H-Rap show. Let them point you in the right direction. Because what I try to do is put down breadcrumbs, send you down a rabbit hole. Hopefully I'm doing that. And then you look and go down that rabbit hole. Oh, God. Yeah, I didn't know. Instead of listening to a, a, a Puff Daddy talking about he will start his own political party, which is moronic at, at its at its lowest level. He he started off at the bottom. He's a moron, and then when we delve into it, he gets dumb and dumb. Mind you, remember Rock the Vote, Vote or Die. Puff wasn't even registered to vote, but that's what I'm talking. About. Now. Puff talking about starting his own political party. In theory, that makes a whole lot of sense. When you, oh man, y'all not doing what we're supposed to do. The blah 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 blah. But well, here's something that's gonna really bother you. I'm listening to John Leguizamo last night. John Leguizamo is talking about Latinx people because they call Latinx and not Latinos. They Latinx. But guess what he did? He included Mexicans, Central American, South American. And Caribbean Latino people. But we were sitting around here talking about, man, screw the Africans. Screw the Jamaicans. Man, it's the brothers right here. We worried about ADOS, American descendants of slaves. Slaves are not people. American descendants are people who were captured and forced into slavery. How about that, ADOS? Allow me to digress. But we worried about everybody else linking up. You linking up on the premise of a language, and we're not even linking up on the premise of what we look like. Back to uh, Puff Dad. You want to start your own political party, Puff? Ingenious. What a new idea. Not. Puff, I'm going to need you to hurry up and... Sit your ass down. Sit your ass down. Please. Please do that, man. Because starting up your own political party, you are simply... Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. 
stupid. The reason I'm calling them wrong and stupid is because it takes millions upon millions of people, dollars, which he's not going to throw up on his own to create your own political party. What you do is you create something like the Tea Party and you infiltrate the party in which you get people like R.C. You get people like Ready for Life. You get people like Just Joe. You get people like Rhonda. And you put them strategically in seats in the United States federal government. And then you flood a, a specific party with your people. And then you get those people to vote in your direction. But seeing how obviously how what they were teaching civics, they was teaching dancing, and he took he got an A in that class, he don't know this. Take that, my friend. But again. We listening to people who dance and rap and not people who've been in this for the longest. It's a reason why they don't ask J-Lo what she doing in regards to the election. It's the reason that they don't ask whoever the most popular stripper is in another community. Have you ever seen them ask Mel Gibson anything? Have, they, have you ever seen them ask anybody from another culture that's an entertainer. When, when 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 people talk about politics from the other side of the world, from the dark side, I, I would say, they go get Lindsey Graham. They go get uh, 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 Chris Cuomo. They go get uh, Rachel Maddow. They don't go get rappers. They get people who have immersed their lives into this for several decades and who can speak fluently about political power, access to power, and what you need to do with that power. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yes indeed, Mel Gibson, but that's why I picked Mel Gibson, because he's an abject racist and an anti-Semite, but he's making movies. Damn, but Nick Cannon got fired. That's a whole other show. But this is what I'm saying, man. Stop listening to rappers, man. Karen Hunter, Clay Kane, Joe Madison, uh, uh, Laura Coates. If you want to uh, look up my girl, Laurie Favors, Afro State of Mind on Twitter. These people, she is the president of the Office of Law and Justice in Brooklyn, New York. These people were in the streets doing the work. Tamika Mallory. These people are out here doing the work, dedicating their lives to this. And we got dumbass rappers. Uh, we got we listening to dumbass rappers. My man, ready for life to say, "Age rap, we can't control who the mainstream media chooses to speak to." It's sad but true. You are one thousand percent correct. Shout out to Ready for Life. You are not incorrect. Age rap is totally, totally, totally in the green sense. But here's the thing, right? We can't choose who we listen to. Because when they put that snack tooth drunk dude on TV, we go, God damn, and turn the channel. We need to do that same thing when they put one of these dumbass rappers on TV. That's all I'm saying, right? We have total control of what we listen to. See, we, I, what I'm trying to do here, Raider, and the rest of the people who support me, shout out to the people who support me. I really appreciate it. Because y'all not listeners, y'all not followers, y'all support it, man. Y'all support them. But what we can do is create a safe space for us to commiserate and put ourselves in the best possible situation. We must create that safe space. It used to be church years ago. We would go to church, the pastor would drop some gems on us, and then we would talk about how to rid our community of the scourge that is racism, uh, uh, by, uh, 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 discrimination, and bias. That's what we used to do. Now, it's online. You come to the Rap Show, and we can have a conversation when his phone lines is working. You call in, we can have a conversation about it. But we've gotten far away from that. We have to talk to Raider for Life kids. We got to talk to RC kids. We got to talk to Rhonda kids. We got to talk to everybody face to face. We cannot be talking to these people 
who believe in nonsense. Jesse Ventura and Arnold Schwarzenegger were the governors of the state of Minnesota, the governors, and they were entertained. You are 100% correct. The, the country is 245 years old, and you showed me two times where white Americans supported, what, three, were Reagan. They supported some, some big time entertainers. And those dudes, you right. But what they went direct, the difference is, they went right into politics and they did the political thing. I'm talking about dudes who have zero to do with politics. I'm talking about dudes who have zero to do with anything but entertainment. And they call themselves, they're totally ignorant. They call themselves directing our community, telling our people not to vote. Not saying vote for the right people, not to vote at all. Just, just a history check. Just a history check. 100 million people didn't show up to vote last time. Look what we got. Uh, Mr. Mr. Q, Mr. Mr. Harris, Mr. Combs, well, Mr. Jackson, Mr. Harris, Mr. Combs, who started this whole your vote thing. A hundred million people didn't vote. Everybody said, well, Donald Trump lost by three million votes, the popular vote. Don't you understand? Listen to what you're dealing with. Donald Trump lost by three million votes in the popular vote. That means of the 200 million people that were here and the people who were eligible to vote, that means about 75 million people voted for Donald Trump. See, nobody really can talks about that. Because if we were a fair and just nation, how in the hell did that many people vote for a narcissistic, habitual lying Rape potential rapists, big. I'm just saying. You still have people saying they're still undecided. This is a dude. This is a dude who stood on national television in a, in a political debate and told a terrorist group to stand down and stand by. But you're still. But you're still undecided. This is what civics I mean. Because had you voted two years ago and put the right people in the, in the Senate and the House of Representatives, and if you wrote in two years, you could strip them of all, all this power. See, what we do is talk about the right now. We don't talk about the future. This chick, Amy Cohen Barrett, she was chosen out of college because they knew she was the right type of puppet that they could guide and put into the situation. They knew that. But see, we're thinking about right now. Whether Donald Trump wins or loses this election, you need to be thinking about 12 years from now. Seriously. Because in 12 years, you would have had, at a minimum, three different presidential terms. And if you think about 12 years from now, what happens is this. You put yourself in a position to win. We, you know, you got people on TV. I mean, I'm a conservative, and I hate Donald Trump. We'll see. We'll see. It's the story I heard this week. This dude, black dude, was adopted by a Jewish family. He would come home and say, my friend, my friend, my friend. And his Jewish dad would say, would they help hide you? And he said it used to annoy the hell out of him when his father asked him that. Will it help? What do you mean, will it help? I don't know if they'll help hide me. And to a 50-year-old black man, I knew exactly what he was saying. He was talking about being a Holocaust victim and his family being a Holocaust victim. And your real friends will help the Gestapo, keep the Gestapo off you. How many people are willing to hide us? And not hide us, how many people are willing to roll with us? Because every time I turn around, I hear about Man, the guns throw out of bullets. Uh, note, to, note to all the black entrepreneurs. How about opening up an ammo company? Uh, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Oprah Winfrey. Any other black billionaires out there? Millionaires and billionaires. How about open up a black-owned ammo company? 
Because if all the gun stores are out of ammo and you open up a store in the black community that can help create ammo, the threat dissipates, doesn't it? But that's neither here nor there. I'm just saying. It just seems kind of uh, it seems kind of rudimentary to me. Seems like the basics. But see, when they stripping away your rights, it's too late. Once people start stripping away your rights to do what you want to do, it's too late. Because now you screw. You screw. We wait till the 12th hour to do everything, and that's what's been kicking us and I behind for the last few decades. Like 15 of them. 15.7 to be exact. We cannot wait to the last minute to do things. As I stated, they're trying to strip away Roe versus Ray. They're trying to strip away uh, uh, the Affordable Care Act, a.k.a. Obamacare. It ain't important to you because you got a good job and you know, I don't need that. But guess what? Hey, man, the police just kicked my ass. and I'm going to sue. And then you go to the appellate court and it's one of those Donald Trump appointed judges. And even though you're right, he, did, he, he, proves, he chooses white over right and if you don't understand what i'm saying let's go back three years the, the boy in stanford the rapist in stanford raped that girl behind that dumpster it was clear and and, and, and and concise there was no way to get out of it and the judge said oh man he got a bright future in front of him i'm not sending him to jail that same judge was sending your black ass to jail throw up throw it up throw the key up under the jail and throw mail the key to jesus and and and, and say when you get back bring the key and let this jump out yeah. How about this? Roxanne Torres. If you don't know the name, I'm finna introduce you to this woman, Roxanne Torres. Roxanne Torres, the cops busting her crib. They bust at her. They hit her. She get away. She called the police, get ready to sue the police. And your next Supreme Court justice said, because she got away, they didn't violate her rights. So she had to either get shot in the house and bleed out and potentially bleed out and die or just lay up the bullets in you. So you can serve as, a, so she can get the rights that she deserves as, as the Fourth Amendment. The Fourth Amendment, if y'all don't know, see, everybody know the Second Amendment, everybody know the First Amendment, everybody know the Fifth Amendment. But the Fourth Amendment in essence is saying you have the right to stay in your house and be safe. Breonna Taylor, Breonna Taylor, Breonna Taylor. So if she would have died, then she'd have had the right to sue them. But seeing how she didn't die, and she ran and got away from people who did not identify themselves as police officers, who did not uh, 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 give her a fair chance to live. And you bust in my house and start shooting, I don't have no gun, I'm going to run. But because you didn't run, you don't have the castle doctrine that you're supposed to be protecting against. And then you just SOL. But hey, vote don't, it ain't going to affect me. Vote ain't going to affect me. Ask the sister Torres that. Ask the sister Torres. And again, it goes back to the original point. Learn your history, brothers and sisters. Here's a fun question for everybody. How many presidents have been assassinated in the United States of America? Most people say two. Abraham Lincoln, John F. Kennedy. And now that I ask you that, you're going, it has to be more than that. I'm going to give you answers for Abraham Lincoln, John F. Kennedy, William McClendley, uh, and James Garfield. But you don't get that because guess what? That ain't the, those are not the sexy uh, choices. See, Abraham Lincoln puts guns in our ancestors' hand and they won the war, which kept the Confederate, I mean, kept, kept the Union intact. Because Abraham Lincoln then freed the slaves. The Emancipation Proclamation freed the slaves that were in the South. That's literally like me coming to your house and take and take your kids off punishment. I decree that R.C.'s kids can go outside when they want to, even though they got bad grades and he says stay in the house. R.C. kids look at me like, boy, you outside your damn mind. My pops have knocked me out. That's what R.C. was saying. His kids would be like, man, cut it out. Knock it off, buddy. But that's what Abraham Lincoln should get credit, credit for. 
with the Emancipation Proclamation. We freed ourselves. We won a war. I've told y'all this several times. But that's what they teach you in school. George Washington wasn't a liar. They tried to get Reagan right. George Washington wasn't a liar. He chopped down a cherry tree. And he had wooden teeth. Remember those lies, they told, those stories they told you? To get you to worship some 300 slave, 300 African-owning terrorists. Oh, by the way, those wooden teeth, the dentures were wooden. The teeth came out of your ancestors' mouths. They came out of your ancestors' mouths as they were living. As they were living. Thomas Jefferson helped write, construct the, uh, the, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. He's a child molester. And he owned our ancestors as well. See, you've been indoctrinated into loving people who did you no good. He had a great mind. James Madison. He had a great mind. He owned our ancestors. He had them on death camps and they used a pretty word called uh, uh, was uh, plantations. These were death camps. Runaway slaves. Freedom seekers. Freedom seekers. They were seeking freedom. They were not slaves. They were put into bondage. There is no slavery nation. But they don't teach you this. They don't teach you this in school. They don't bring these. They don't hold these truths to be self-evident. <laughs> my man, yeah, yeah. Nah, most of them, are. most of them. My man, I see. Said my daughter is sassy as hell, but she does listen to me. She's almost seventeen. Exactly. I couldn't tell you that, but see, they taught you that Abraham Lincoln. Oh yeah, they taught you Abraham Lincoln was the friend of the black man. Abraham Lincoln also told the black man that you can pack your shit and go back home. And we wrote something in that Emancipation Proclamation so you can go back home because we gave these. These goddamn uh, uh, plantation, these death camp owners, three hundred dollars per man when when your ancestors were put free. These are the stories that you are not being told. You know, like uh, Columbus discovered America. It would have been better if they just said Columbus introduced the uh, east to the, uh, the, the new land. And then you go, oh, that's almost true. And then that, that wouldn't have been true either, but you could have said it and it made more sense. You can, uh, can, can we discover Ron's house up in Canada? No, we cannot. No, we cannot. But that's what they taught you. See, the reason I'm going over these fun facts, Andrew Jackson sent millions of people west on foot, <laughs> called the Trail of Tears. How the hell did Napoleon sell the western part of the country to the United States of America? When did he buy that? Those are called the discovery documents because when you buy into what is known as the original sin of America, it's not the original sin of America. The original sin of America is killing all the people who was living in before you got your ass in. See, that's the one notion you keep buying into white supremacist thoughts or white nationalist thoughts, and that's why you are scared to buck. That's why you're scared to buck, because you keep buying into this nonsense. They use terms like the original sin to get you to buy into a criminal enterprise. You stole this land and destroyed people, and then you stand around and brag it. We built this place. You built the homes of a criminal enterprise, and you're proud of that. Shout out to Dr. Gray comment. I'm just saying, man. This it, is age rap, man. I, all I do is tell jokes on air, man. That's all I do is tell jokes on air. And I make people laugh. But I get fun facts, too, man. We have to, man. Introduce yourself to a stranger that looks like you. If you hear my voice, introduce yourself to a stranger that looks like you. Hi, I am, man. Hold the door open, brother. For the next sister that walked past you going into the grocery store with that damn mask on, hold the door. Open. Say hello. Sisters do the same thing, man. I remember when I first, I got one of my first jobs. This is white guy. 
he asked me, do all black people know each other? I was like, why? We won lunch at the time. We walk down the street, about four black people gave me the nod. I gave them the nod back. He said, all black people know each other? I was like, yeah, pretty much. I knew I was lying. It just felt good to say it. Shout out to Ed Lover. This is a, this is a line straight from Ed Lover. Man. Instead of each, instead of calling each other the N word, this N word that, my N word that, how about we supplant brother? See, because if we start calling each other brother again, sister again, instead of calling them bitches, it's harder to shoot, slap, and stab your brother. Harder to hurt your brother. You might get mad with your brother, but you ain't gonna want to kill him. Learn your history. Delve into the history of our people. Listen to me and be great show on Thursdays while we talk about this docuseries called Enslaved. Again, we're, we're only laying out breadcrumbs, man. We not uh we just want you to go down the rabbit hole and realize this. Listen to the top of the show. Well, each and every week I'm gonna drop you some a gem from black history. So you can understand the greatness that you come from. And once you identify the greatness that you come from, you'll realize that it's inside of you. Everything that's in your parents are inside of you, everything your grandparents are inside of you, everything their grandparents are inside of you. Good, bad, or indifferent. But it's mostly good. Learn, man. Learn. Learning is the key. And as I stated, man, John Leguizamo was on Bill Maher last night. I hate Bill Maher. I don't know why I was watching it, but it must have been meant for me to watch it because I got this gym right here. 32, Latin, 32 million Latinx people are registered to vote in America. Wow. 30 million black people are registered to vote. <laughs> Bill Maher gladly said, so why don't they uh, talk to the Latino acts? That was a backhand way to try to supplant our community. We have no permanent friends. We just have permanent interests. And with that being said, man, I'm wrapping this up, man. I want to thank each and every one of you guys for tuning in to Build for This Network. If you haven't already, please subscribe. You got a link for me today, please. You can listen to it on the app, share it on your social media. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tune in. Later this evening, uh, tomorrow. I think Raider got a show tomorrow. Maybe. If not, continue to support him when he comes back. Tiger Park may have a show tomorrow. Continue to support them if they don't. I know D Gray got a show tomorrow. He and he always in the Gudio. He might even have a show tonight, man. Gudio Taboo, man. Support the brothers, man. Support uh, DJ King, Raw, C, DJ CJ, DJ Joe, DJ Finesse. Support all those networks, y'all. Y'all can play. You get too much skibbity bibbity rap. Damn it, they ain't playing that. They playing real good old soul music. Then Monday morning, happy birthday to the number one chief, Rocket Jersey Burn. Please stop in his show and show that man some love. He older than my grandmama coat, but you gotta show him some love, man. But say happy birthday to Chief Rocket Jersey Burn on the Recap Entertainment Show Monday morning. Monday evening, back in the Goodyear with my man D. Gray. Real Cash Ranchers be on too. Support them. Tuesday, DJ Mad Knox, aka the Show Killer. This is inside joke. Don't worry about it if you don't understand. You don't need to understand anything. On 4 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, my man Free Agent Raider for Life drops gems, baby. Dope show, and I'm not saying that because he's supporting me. I've been, I've said it. Way before he ever supported me. And my man, D. Great, is on the night with Gudio Taboo. It's a fun show. Tune in. Why don't you just that? This is what you do. Download the Spreaker.com app. Follow Esquire Radio. Follow Ray Free is Ready for Life. Follow the DJ, DJ CJ, DJ uh, uh, Rare Beauty, DJ Finesse, uh, uh, DJ Big OG, all those guys. And then you'll get notifications when that shows come up. And then you'll be boom. Forget football. And uh then and then you don't you watch football. You don't listen to football. 
Podcasts are a listening exercise, Miss Rhonda S. But then you tune in Tuesday, you got my man DJ Mad Box, aka the show killer, burning it down. Then you got me, Jody Kappa. You don't need to listen to football. That's what I mean. Rhonda, for those who listen in the background thinking H Rap is going crazy, he has ADHD. Joe Buck is stupid. He don't need to listen to him. Put, put the TV on mute, put on Rated for Life. And then you need the best of both worlds. You get a good Rated for Life show. And then you get a football game. Passing out the boo-boo flu. But uh, then you got me, Jody Kappa, Big Illinois. I really, I really believe Big Illinois from uh, in, uh, Iowa or something. I'm just saying. I never I never knew him from Illinois. I just knew him from Iowa. But he Big Illinois for now. Until we do some research. Big, me, Big Illinois, Joe, from, Joe DeCappa. We do the End of the Bench podcast, hosted by yours truly. After that, DJ Rare Beauty is on. Killing it. Soul music. Then you got my man, the Al Capone of the microphone. And the sensual girly gal. I don't know. I, I didn't do it like her. But it it sounded way better. She do. And then Wednesday. Westside Wednesday, the Gudio fire right back up. I don't be in the chat room, but I'll be listening. Be great. I, I really hate the chat room, y'all. I'm sorry. I'll be listening to y'all show. I just hate the chat room. I'm sorry. Just so if I don't be uh, rocking in your chat room, I'll be in the list. <laughs> be great. Westside Wednesdays. And then you got Deacon Allah Abdel Nabi Dale, master of the 7 Eleven. Go to www. I can't understand DeaconDale.com <laughs> and uh, listen to the happy hour recording of Deacon Dale. Once you download that app, it really sounds like he's speaking in English. I'm just saying. Allah Abdel Nabi is cold on the uh, on the uh, podcast. I mean, I'm, I'm just I'm just saying. Rock with my man De- Deacon Allah Abdel Nabi Dale, and you you you'll be enjoying. I'm on episode three of Love Pair Country. Hell of a show. My man RC. Then Wednesday night. Live off hiatus. He spelled that wrong, I think. Big Illinois. Yours truly. Anu Dre and the sister Kim Webb. We are the backyard crew. We coming back. I really believe Big Illinois thought he was gonna get locked up. He he, he was selling illegal fireworks out of his trunk. But uh, that's another situation. The backyard crew is awesome. Then my man she is round tree and DJ Knox burned it down with Theory of the Coach, my favorite show on the network. And then me and D Gray killing it with the couch potatoes. We talking about Lovecraft Country. The last episode is about to go down. Then we're going to be talking about Enslaved. I got a couple other get downs that I want to talk about with D-Great. You know, we're going to see about that. Uh, we, 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 we doing black entertainment and, 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 you know, to make it make it so we can get out, man. Then Friday, DJ Nas burning it down again, a.k.a. the show killer. <laughs> and then Big Illinois dancing with my father and a, and, a, and a wife beater. That's the name of that new show. But, uh, he killing it on the on the smooth grooves. Show Big Illinois some love. Wednesday and Saturday, my man Deacon Ally Abdel Nabi Dale and Lisa Duke. One of them smooth grooves. The other is smooth blues. Deacon Dale burning it down, and I will be back in 168 hours. 168 and a half hours. 166 and a half hours. In the backyard podcast. I got to reschedule. I apologize to my main man being from BS3. I appreciate you giving me your time. I must recalibrate. And a bunch of other big words to me. Fix my sound. I couldn't hear it. I knew something was wrong when I was playing my music. And I didn't get no feedback on this side. But uh, I re- really appreciate it, man. Share. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And continue to support Bill for this network. And continue to stay civically minded. Remember, man. We cannot do this without each other. The human experience is the only experience and on earth that we need each, that they need other people. If you have a puppy and you remove him and put him in the midst of a bunch of cats, he's gonna chase he's gonna eat bones, he's gonna bark, he's gonna chase his tail and do stuff that dogs do as he grows. 
If you get a kid and put him in the midst of a bunch of dogs, he's going to be a kid. If you get a human and put him in the midst of that, he's going to try to be a puppy, a kid. Put him in the midst of some monkeys, he's going to try to be a monkey. People, human beings are the only thing on the face of the earth that need other human beings to be as good as they can possibly be. Good, bad, or indifferent. And remember this, to quote the great James Baldwin, I can't believe what you say because I do what you do. And that's why Donald Trump shouldn't have had a, that's why Ice Cube shouldn't have had a conversation with Donald J. Trump. Because you don't have to, you can't believe what he say. You just believe what he's done. And what he has done is made a mockery of this situation. And he is a narcissistic, bigoted jackass. And as I say at the end, as, as I say at the end of every show, I'll say this after this break. I want you guys to continue to listen. And before I leave, dream those dreams and man up a woman up and lay those dreams. Life without dreams flows in black and white. Life with dreams flows in technicolor surround sound. I'll be right back after this brief intermission. Greetings, brothers and sisters, family and friends. I'm your minister of wellness. All this is about is boosting the immune system. This whole pandemic, scamdemic, pandemic, whatever you want to call it. It's all about having a strong immune system. A good friend of mine, bro, long-term brother, and he just told me that he came down with coronavirus, but he said it's pretty much like a bad cold and it's passing very quickly, but he's very healthy. He pretty much follows a strict nutritarian eating style, does a lot of water fasting. He works out because he's a professional boxer, so he's not suffering from But then he told me that his wife, she is suffering. She is suffering tremendously because she has what? Comorbidities. That's what I haven't. Ain't hey, that what I've been telling you? So he did. He told me, he was like, yeah, man, I'm concerned about her. She's not going to recover as quickly as me. I'm good. It is nothing to me. But her, she's having a hard time because she has this issue, this issue, this issue. That's what this is about. Get healthy. You can strengthen. What did I say in my coronavirus lecture, which will be on DVD? That if the whole world, if Dr. Devil Fauci, that devil who works for the NIH, teaching nobody, ain't, ain't teaching nothing about how to build the immune system naturally. Let me get before the nation. Let the minister of wellness get before the nation. And if everybody followed a nutritarian eating style, you could arm your immune system and be 100 percent protected against coronavirus and any other disease in 30 days or less. And that's what I'm going to teach you quickly in this video. Doesn't take long. Doesn't take long. Boosting your immune system. Eat the medicine foods of God and get off the satanic American diet. That's how you arm your immune system. You can be protected. Yeah, he got it. He said it's nothing but a cold. He said he did a one day water fast and the fasting alone. And he said he had idiots trying to tell him, oh, you shouldn't be fasting. You should be eating something. No, you dummy. The immune system is strengthened when you're not eating. If you're sick, the, the first thing you need to do is do a water fast. That's the first thing is to not eat because not eating enables your immune system to turn its attention away from breaking down and digesting food. And the reason why I'm so harsh on the people that told him that because the brother is healthy. But it's always the insane food zombies. Know nothing about health. Nothing about healing. Ain't healed a soul. And they always have the something to say. So let's get into this, brothers and sisters. Again, the medicine foods of God. Well, before we get into it, October 31st. That's the last lecture for 2020 on Breast Cancer Awareness Month, October 31st. Saturday, October 31st, Center for Divine Love. That's the location of the final lecture the final opportunity to come hear me and come greet me, your minister of wellness in person. That's it for 2020 until next year. So I hope you can make it. If you can't make it, it will be live streamed. It will be a private live stream event, which means I need your email. You can register your email by clicking the link in the description box and pinned comment section of this video or by visiting the minister of wellness dot com. A pop up box to enter your email will appear when I have your email. You'll be kept abreast on all further details concerning my final event, and you'll start getting your recipes Monday through Friday and any other pertinent information. 
the minister of wellness.com pop up box or click the link in the description box pin comment section. Eat the medicine foods of God. Organic plant-based foods boast a range of essential macro and micronutrients that can stimulate immune function and strengthen and strengthen immune cells. Some of the greatest immune boosters, you already know, greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, bears, and seeds. You already know. Say it again with me. Greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, bears, and seeds, your immune system special forces. And then outside of the G-bombs, you have citrus fruits, red bell peppers, broccoli, garlic, ginger, spinach. Increase your fiber intake that feeds good bacteria in your gut. Help maintain optimal immune health. G-bombs are a great source of fiber. Asparagus, artichoke, lentils, black beans, oats, organic oats, especially steel cut oats. This is how you boost your immune system. Smoothie, salad, soup, steamed green vegetables. Eat those four things over and over and over and over. Use different recipes. Exercise vigorously. Don't snack in between meals. No salt, no sugar, no oils. Don't cook with salt, sugar, oils. Learn to flavor your food with herbs and spices and enjoy the natural flavor that God put in the plant foods. The salt is deadly, it destroys your taste buds. I have several videos on salt. You're not going to post comments on my videos telling people that salt is healthy. I'm going to delete them. And if you keep spamming my channel, I'm going to ban you. If you want to teach people to eat salt, do it on your own channel. If you want to teach people to cook in oil, do it on your own channel. I am losing weight right now because of significant weight gain from eating oily vegan food. Worst thing you can do is cook your food in oil. And then, of course, no processed sugar. Don't snack in between meals because your immune system can only work in a state of fasting. Besides fiber rich foods, fermented foods are also ideal for maintaining optimal gut health and supporting immune function. Thanks to microorganisms called probiotics, nutritious fermented foods. I've done a whole video on fermented foods and telling you how to utilize them. Again, the satanic American diet. It is designed by the devil himself to keep people fat and sick so they can get into the hands of the sorcery industry. This weekend pump you with vaccines and drugs and take all your money from you. That's the death train. It's the satanic American diet. It's not the standard American diet. It's the satanic American diet. It's not a natural way of eating. I'm not telling you to eat naturally. I'm telling you to eat the medicine foods of God. It has nothing to do with science. It's about being obedient to our creator. That's what the minister of wellness teaches. Sugar is a drug more addicting than meth. It will destroy you from your brain to your toes, destroys your immune system. Fresh fruit in fruits and vegetables, especially berries. No processed foods, fake foods created by sorcerers. Oh, they're chemists. They're saying, no, they're sorcerers. They're wicked. They're designing food to manipulate our brains. That's why we have to fight so much. That's why I have to write the 12 components of food addiction because of these devils messing with people's brains to where they 500 pounds wheeling themselves in Walmart, loading their cart up with potato chips and ice creams. That's satanic. That's an abomination. The food industry, managed stress, Get rid of toxic relationships. Get rid of toxic people. Get rid of bitterness and wrath. One of the, the, one of the main thing people say, well, you need to turn off that TV. Turn off the TV and turn off anything, any negativity, music, anything negative. Positivity. Feed your brain with the medicine, foods, and most high. Listen to things that will help you to elevate your life. And the biggest way that you can elevate your life is by understanding that your life is in the hands of God and it is your decision, your choices, the power that he has given you that determines the course of your life. Not some system, not a group of people, nothing else. No, no. You look in the mirror and you accept full responsibility for your life. And if there's something negative in your life. 
then you cry out to the most high for the strength to overcome it. So that leaves no room for bitterness and unforgiveness and holding grudges. All it leaves room for is that if there's a door that's standing in your way with the help of the almighty God, you knock down that door, you take it off the hinges and you keep on walking a higher path. And then you have to get your butt up and exercise and then proper sleep is very important for boosting the immune system. Do that 30 days, boost your immune system. Eat the medicine foods of God, greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds. No added salt, no added sugar, no added oils. Get rid of the satanic American diet, all the fake foods, the disease animals. Forgive. Take full responsibility for your life. Exercise vigorously every day and sleep. Coronavirus won't have no power over you in 30 days. Smoothie, soup, salad, steam, green vegetables. Get on the email list and you'll get your recipes Monday through Friday, including Friday desserts. Visit the minister of wellness.com, the minister of wellness.com. Earlier, I forgot to mention the organic iris sea moss and the stragglers. That's another element in boosting your immune system. Invest in high quality supplements. That cheap stuff won't get it done. Invest in high quality. Anything that has my label on it, you can assure that it has been scrutinized by your minister of wellness. Organic iris sea moss and stragglers, two of the best in the world that will be hard to come by. As people get sicker and sicker as we slowly inch our way towards the so-called flu season. And then I have everything else you need to boost your immune system. The ultimate immunity building package, vaccine detox package, and more. Books with other recipes, meal plans. TheMinisterOfWellness.com. TheMinisterOfWellness.com. If you need help placing an order, any questions, comments, or concerns, call 888-847-8026. 888-847-8026. That's the same number to call if you'd like to book a wellness consultation. I love to coach you one on one. Just call 888-847-8026. Join the Facebook group. I can be healthy. I will be healthy. I must be healthy. Just first search for that phrase in Facebook and join us. I'm also on Twitter, Instagram and LinkedIn. You can find me all over the World Wide Web simply by searching for the Minister of Wellness. The Minister of Wellness dot com forward slash give. That's the official donation page. Please go there. Make a tax deductible donation to Ministry of Wellness, Inc. The Most High will richly bless you for helping me to promote this truth and save lives. I sincerely thank you for your love and support. The Minister of Wellness dot com forward slash give or check the description box, pin comment section and that page for all of the ways to be a blessing to the ministry that's blessing your life. I know you can live a long life in excellent health. I know that it can. I know that it will be yours. We are built for this network, for the strong, not the weak.